What's up guys, this is my uh, video on my thoughts and analysis on episode one, as well as my predictions uh, for the season, some theories I'm playing with. Um, I already made a video about uh, Game of Thrones in general and what the final season means to me and you know, some feedback about that. But this one is specific about series, uh, season one, uh, sorry, season eight, episode one, and um, you know, my predictions for the rest of the season. So let me start, right? So my biggest theory that I have um, concerns the Night King, right? So that everybody knows that the theory is um, the Night King has a target. He's going to Winterfell for something. Now, the, the theories range from his target is Jon Snow, or his target is Bran, or his target is, um, you know, um, Sam's kid, you know, the baby, Gilly's baby. Um, I, yeah, I don't really think, those are kind of like general and too obvious. I, I think my theory is this. My theory is that the, Night's King's, the Night King's target is death. He wants to die. That's his, that's his ambition. That's his target. He's been an immortal. He was created as a, as a weapon, as an undying weapon. And he was imprisoned behind the wall for thousands of years. So here it is. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're trapped in death forever. So my theory is that he knows that only John and Danny can kill him. Basically, it, it has to be something to be done with the song of ice and fire. It has to be, John is basically literally ice and fire, and then Danny's there with the dragon, right? So he, he needs to get to Winterfell. I think he gets to Winterfell because he's a Stark. He wants to go to the crypts. He, that's where he wants to die. He has to die in Winterfell. He wants to rest in Winterfell. So that's my, that's my theory about it. I think the Night King, his target is death. He knows that only John and Danny can kill him. Or maybe John is the only one that can kill him in a certain very specific way. Um, and he wants to go to Winterfell because he is a Stark and he has to die in Winterfell. So he has to die in Winterfell, he has to die by the hands of John, and he has to die. And that's his target. All right, so the second theory that I'm playing with kind of concerns that is that what can kill him, right? So one of the most important swords in the show uh, is Dawn, Sir Arthur Dane's uh, sword. Um, it was made from an iron core of a meteorite. The theme or the, or the idea of a meteor or a comet keeps occurring, right? So it's in the opening credit. It was in the opening season when Bran looked up and he saw the, the, the comet or the meteor streaking through the sky. Uh, the Night King references it. Um, and it's, it's the sword from which, uh, it's the metal from which the sword was made, Dawn, right? Dawn meaning a light bringer. What is the dawn? The dawn is when the light comes. What is a meteor? A meteor or a comet is a light bringer. It brings light into the sky. So the meteor is also a symbol or it, it's also symbolized by the, the swirls. That's what the swirls mean. It's, the, it's, it's a symbol for the meteor. So the meteor is, is important. It is a light bringer. And I think dawn has something to play with it. And I think dawn, because when Ned found John, when he went to rescue his, city, his sister uh, Liana at the Red Keep, Oh, sorry, at the Red Tower, um, you know, he defeated, well, uh, Sir Arthur Dane died. He had the sword with him, and he went, when he went into the room with, the, with, with, with Liana and she's bleeding on the bed, he had the sword with him, he put it by the bed. There was no way he would have taken that sword back to Dorne and given it to House Dane before taking John back to the north. Because, so he had to have gone back to the north with the sword, and he must have hid the sword in the crypts. So my, my, my theory is that John will find Dawn in the crypts, he will use that to kill the Night King. The Night King will die in the, in the crypts where he belongs. Okay, so that's my theory about the Night King. That's my theory about the meteor and dawn and how all that ties in together. Okay, my uh, third theory is concerns Bran. I don't think Bran, I think we need to believe what Bran is saying when he says, I'm not Bran. He says, I'm not Bran, I'm the, I'm the, th the three-eyed raven. When John says, hey, you're a man, he says, uh, almost. I don't think Bran is Bran anymore, meaning that I, don't, I think he, he, was, he, he died in that cave. Bran died in that cave with the Three-Eyed Raven. But the Three-Eyed Raven transferred his consciousness into John's body. That's why John is acting, I'm sorry, that's why Bran is acting like that. The Three-Eyed Raven transferred his consciousness into Bran's body in the cave when, they got, when the zombies were attacking them and, and Hodor had to hold the door. I believe that, that the Three-Eyed Raven hijacked Bran's body. And that's why he's saying, I'm the Three-Eyed Raven, I'm not Bran, I'm not your brother. I'm not the same, and that's why he acts like, he acts so distant to everybody else because 
he's, they're not his family, right? He's seeing, th seeing, seeing th the world through the, the eyes of the three-eyed raven. That's why he's acting like that. He's always looking, he's acting weird because guess what? He's not Brian anymore. He's the three-eyed raven. He's an entity. He's the entity called the three-eyed raven that was transferred into Brian's body while they were in that cave. And that's my theory on that. Okay, my final theory so far that I've come up with um, in terms of predictions for the season uh, has to do with Euron and uh, Cersei. I, I believe that Cersei is totally out her depth. I think this season she's going to become a sympathetic character because I think Euron has something really, really fucked up up his sleeve, right? He's acting too nice. He's not, Euron doesn't act like that. Right, he was nice to her. Oh, I'm gonna leave a prince in that belly. No, that, he doesn't care about that. Euron cares about one thing: power. He doesn't care about love. He doesn't care about. He doesn't want Cersei. He wants her throne. He wants her power. She, he's gonna. She's gonna send. She's gonna abandon all the people that cares about her. Tyrion cares about her. She threw him away, a long time ago. Jamie, of course, cares about her. She says, "Fuck off, Jamie." Right, so she uh, she allowed everybody to ride into the sunset that get, really gave a fuck about her. Even even um, Kyburn. Kyburn comes and he he seems a little concerned. He's like, "Your Majesty, I've got bad news. The uh, the dead is broken through the wall." And she's like, she she snickers, she laughs. So I think Kyburn in his head is like, "This bitch is crazy." I mean, you know, I like to walk on the wild side, but this bitch is is straight up suicidal. It's like if she doesn't want the world, she's gonna burn it down. Right? If she can't get the world, she's going to burn it down. Right? So I think the walls are going to start to close in around Cersei. And I think she's allowing Euron. I think her biggest mistake was get to let Euron in her bed. Um, she let her defenses down. She showed how weak and, how weak and desperate she was. Um, there's something up with Golden Company. That little, that little uh, you know, scene about, oh, a few of them died on the way here in transit. Because they cheated at, at, at gambling. So Euron killed a, a few of the Golden Company. But why? Why? I think him and that guy who's supposed to be the head of the Golden Company, they got something going on. They're, they're up to something, right? Because I wouldn't trust Euron to leave, you know, with the ships, with his, with his fleet. I don't know if he had the gold with him, right? Did Cersei give him the gold to take to, to Essos to get the Golden Company? Because if he did, it's like, if I'm Euron, you give me a bunch of gold to pay for 20,000 men, hey. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm gonna take my cut. Anyway, so he goes, he gets the Golden Company, coming back, so they, they lose a few of the Golden Company. They're supposed to be arguably the greatest fighting force in the world. And, you know, some of, those, some of the guys get lost. And the, and the leader of the Golden Company, he doesn't look too bothered, right? Then the comment about elephants, right? So one of the, one of the, the mythical thing about the Golden Company is they're, they're elephants. That's what the fears, you know, they, the, the enemies fear them because they're elephants. The elephants can't travel over the sea. A little bit suspect, a little bit weird. Um, I don't know what something's going on with Euron. Something big is going on, going on with Euron. I think Cersei bit off more than her, she can chew. And I think Euron is going to betray her. We all, we all know, uh, we all kind of sense that. But I think it's going to be huge. I think he's going to betray her to the point where um, he's, um, you know, he's going he's gonna to just do some crazy stuff, right? Anyway. Um, so that's basically it. That's basically it for my theories about, you know, so far for the season. I got the Night King. His target is death. He wants to die in Winterfell because he's a Stark and he has to die in the crypts. I believe Dawn or the, or the Meteor has, is related to everything. I think Dawn is in the crypts. John will find Dawn, um, flee in the Night King, and he will use it to kill the Night King. Um, three, I think Bran, is, Bran is, has died in that cave, and I think he's, his body is being possessed or he's been hijacked by the th th Three-Eyed Raven. And fourth, I think Euron has something way big up his sleeve, and I think Cersei is gonna, she's gonna regret a lot this season. So basically, that's it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoy my thoughts and opinions and ideas. Of course, this is Game of Thrones. You know, we, we're all just speculating here. Um, you know, half of, half, of, half of the joy of watching Game of Thrones is, is to, you know, to sort of guess, come up with some ideas, some theories, and then be proven totally wrong. So. Um, excited for this this Sunday's, of course, season two. I mean, episode two. Um, looks like it'll be the episode right before the the. the um, looks like the episode will end with, when when the, the Night King arrives at Winterfell. Um, looked like there's some issues. I mean, Jesus Christ, what's up with John, man? Like, I feel so sorry for John. I think John is the most tragic character in the history of television, and I wouldn't say literature, but 
maybe even literature, right? The kid was born a quote-unquote bastard, even though he's the king of the realm, right? So he's born, his mother died during childbirth, his father was killed. His father took him back, his, his uncle took him back to his, his, um, his ancestral home. His stepmother, step-aunt, treated him like shit his whole life, you know. Only a couple of his siblings really appreciated him as a brother. Um, Sansa treated him like shit. He goes, he gets sent as the bastard kid to the wall, <laughs> right? Um, has to fight the wildlings, and then he, he betrays the, the Night's Watch because it's part of the plan, and he's fighting for the Nightlings, and then he betrays the, 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 the Nightlings, um, the Wildlings, sorry. Um, and then he goes and he, and he becomes back, you know, uh, head of, the, of the, the Night's Watch. They kill him, <laughs> literally they kill him. Um, he comes back from the dead. He, he fights the army of the dead. You know, he fights uh, Ramsey, takes back Winterfell, goes, tries to convince, convince Daenerys that, that you know, he's, the dead are coming. She doesn't believe him, he has to go, he has to go north of the wall. You know, to get to get uh, a, a sample to bring back to her, fights the, the the army of the dead there, gets left behind, almost dies in the lake, jumps back on his horse. Uh, you know, gets back on his horse somehow with his with the help of his uncle, rides off to the wall, barely alive, gets rescued, gets sent back, falls in love with Daenerys, they have sex, goes back to Winterfell. Everybody's on his ass about bringing her there. You know, everybody's giving him shit. It's like people, we got the army of the dead is coming. They'll be here in a couple couple days. Can we, just, can we just figure this, if we survive all of this shit, let's figure this out afterwards, right? <laughs> they just drop in the drama, you know, it's like the save the drama for your mom, and they just dropping it on John's ass. Every scene, they dropping it. And then Sam comes in, and he's all stressed out about his bastard, his jackass dad and his brother. Hey, your, at, your dad was an asshole. He got a chance to bow, he didn't. Your brother's an even bigger jackass, because he should have been like, hey, my dad's a jackass, you know, like, maybe he's gonna die. Okay, dad, I'll take care of the place. I'll, 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 you know, I'm gonna do what you want me to do. I'm, I'm gonna inherit the, inherit the family, uh, you know, estate or whatever. But no, he, he stood next to his, uh, his brother. Okay, so Danny had to do what she had to do, okay? Go Danny. So Sam, sorry Sam, you know what I mean? Your, your, your family is shit. So they had to get wiped out. Sorry, get over it. Anyway, so then he goes and he tells John about like, hey John, you know, you're the, you're the son of uh, Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. And like, boom, like, what more can you do to John? It's like, I just want John to say, hey, hey guys, all you motherfuckers, whatever you got to tell me, let's figure it out after we survive this shit. Let, if we survive this, we'll figure it out. If we don't, guess what? It's problem solved, right? But if we survive it, then I'm gonna figure out how we are gonna deal with it. Yes, I'm fucking my aunt. Let's figure that shit out afterwards, okay? Yeah, we gotta get Cersei, she didn't, you know, she lied to us. Let's figure that shit afterwards, right? So there's a lot of things going on. I feel so sorry for Jon and, and Daenerys. I don't think it's gonna, that's the sad part, I don't think it's gonna get any better for Jon. The one that I fear the most for is Jon. He's already, he's already been dead, so that kid, that guy, man, he's been through a lot. And um, Danny, of course, she, she's been through a lot as well, you know, Arya. Uh, Sansa, of course. Everybody had their journey, and I think this, that's what's so great about this show is that it is a physical journey of the character, right? So it, it, it's, 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 it's going from one place to another place and multiple places. That's why I love Game of Thrones so much. It, it, it's such a deep and intricate story. So, you know, all you guys ready for uh, episode two this Sunday? Have fun watching. I hope you remember my theories, and um, let's see if they come true. And See you again next week when I'll have my episode two video um, thoughts and analysis as well as any predictions um, or I told you so's that maybe from this, this video I made some predictions that kind of made sense, kind of came through, I don't know. But anyway, winter is here. Vala Morgales. Peace out. Gorilla Mike. Game of Thrones, baby. Let's do it.